Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Today's video is all about hair. Um, I put a Q&A up on my work Instagram account and just got everyone to ask me any questions they want to ask. I am a hairdresser, I've been a hairdresser for over 12 years. Um, I do specialise in extensions but I do have the knowledge of colouring, products and all of that so I'll go through all the questions and answer as best as I can. I did get a lot on extensions so I think I'm going to do any of the questions first and then at the end I'll do all the extension questions so that if you're not interested in extensions you won't get too bored. I'll put a little time note of if you just want to skip for the extension details. Okay so first question was if I could choose one product and one product only what would it be? Honest to God, I cannot stress enough, heat defence. So basically, heat spray is like the best thing ever. If you're going to invest in one product, it's got to be a heat spray. Um, I do use the Beauty Works one. This is their 10 in 1, they do two. They do just a pure heat, heat defence spray. Um, and this is a 10 in 1, so it has got other benefits in it as well. It eliminates frizz, it restores shine, blah, blah, blah. I do use this because um, this is an extension brand, so in salon, it's perfect for me to use on my clients and for my clients to use. Um, but I genuinely love the product as well, so I use it at home. I use it on my daughter's hair because it acts a bit like a leave-in conditioner as well, but it's not heavy. So it's really good on kids' hair for detangling and stuff. Um, and how cute is the packaging? I love it. Um, so basically, if you have got damaged hair or split hair from colour or you've just got naturally weak hair, um, and if you do have split ends and stuff, the split ends split up the hair, which is why people sometimes feel like their hair never grows. So especially around the front where your hair is more delicate and fine, um, like everyone has kind of broken pieces here. If you're, and they're the bits we tend to straighten and curl more and style more and blow dry more. If you're not putting a heat defence on them, you're literally, you just go around in circles. They're never going to grow and you do need to have them cut regularly as well. So without boring you too much, heat spray. If you don't use it, it doesn't matter if it's an expensive one or what, just use one, please. Honestly, I, I moan at all my clients for this and whenever they go away and use one and come back, they're like, oh my God, it's, it makes such a difference. And I'm like, I oh, know. <laughs> Next question. I feel like a, um, I feel like Holly Willoughby. Be. <laughs> so next question, folks. How often should you cut your hair if you want it to grow? Okay, this is a good one. I recommend getting your hair cut every six weeks. You don't need a proper cut every six weeks. So what I recommend to my clients and what I have done to my own hair, if you're trying to grow your own hair, is if every, if every other six weeks you have a dry cut, and what this does is, so for example, if at six weeks you have a good kind of inch off, get those dead ends off, have the style cut in, and then in six weeks time, you don't need that inch off again, else it's never gonna grow. However, if you keep your hair dry, you can see areas that are dry, you can see the split ends, you can see where areas are more weak, and I call it a dusting over. I'll literally dust over my client's hair and just trim off the tiny, tiny bits that need to. That way, you don't wanna leave split ends in your hair because they split up your hair, so your hair won't be growing. So you need to get them off, but you don't need just a traditional wet cut every six weeks because you're never going to get anywhere. Um, so yeah, every other six weeks, ask your hairdresser for just a dry cut just to take off any little nibbly bits that need to come off to keep your hair healthy for it to grow. And then in another six weeks, you can have your proper wet cut and the style redone, if that makes sense. Third question is... Shampoo and conditioner, what's the best? Okay, so this is probably gonna cause uproar. Um, everyone has their own opinion, okay? And I've not worked with every single brand possible. I've only worked with three main brands in the industry. I've worked with Schwarzkopf, I've worked with Aveda, and I've worked with Beauty Works. They're just products I'm comfortable with, I know work, etc., etc. However, so generally I use the Beauty Works shampoo and conditioners gen because I normally have extensions in. I've got them out at the minute. Um, and they're great. Obviously, if you have extensions, you have to use the correct products for the extension. So use whatever your stylist recommends. It makes a massive difference. If you're paying three, four hundred pounds for extensions and you're using Tresemme, you may as well go put your money in a food blender. Honestly, no. So whatever your stylist recommends for your hair extensions, use the matching brand products. Um, with regards to problematic hair so my hair is problematic at the minute um i had covid over christmas oh hello <laughs> was it youtube yes 
I like YouTube. <laughs> what was I saying before you come up? COVID. So I had COVID and I've come to learn that apparently a side effect of having COVID is your hair goes to fucking shit. Um, so a few weeks ago, um, I took my extensions out and it's not my extensions because I've had extensions for over 10 years. So I know the crack. Um, but obviously because I had extensions in, I didn't realise how bad my hair was and I took my extensions out and oh my God, I have no hair. I have no hair around here and underneath. And I have a bush, right? <laughs> I've got a lot of hair on my head, um, but not anymore. And I was really worried, like, oh my God, you know, am I lacking, like, am I deficient in something? Like, I was ringing the doctors, I was Googling thyroid problems, never Google your problems ever. Um, anyway, and apparently it's really common, I put it on my Facebook and so many women replied, thank you for that. Um, yeah, everyone's noticed their hair really thinning and going to crap after COVID. So at the minute, my hair is problematic. So I need some extra, extra care. My friend works for Secondtons. If you're from Northampton or Milton Keynes, you'll know them. They're a brilliant salon. Um, Secondtons use Kevastars products. And I've always known that Kevastars is like up there. Um, I've never worked with them though. So I actually am quite new to it. Anyway, I spoke to my friend and they also used to use Olaplex. And I was like, look, what's the difference? What's best? Da, da, da. They advised me to Kevastars. Kevastars whatever oh my god i cannot i mean you need to take out a mortgage to buy the products so normally you'd go in the salon they can do tests and they'll tell you the exact stuff you need um so it's not like a one shampoo does all if you use the same shampoo for a little while um your hair doesn't get used to it but your hair won't need the same results forever um, so they did, um, my friend Ashley did a little test on me and she felt my hair and stuff and she was like, Jesus Christ, you need the, the best you can get. So she's put me on the, I don't really know how you say any of this, it's the resistance range and I'm number three and four, which I think is like about as damaged as you can get. Um, so she said, use this for six weeks and then they'll do another test on my hair. By then my hair will have repaired and they'll put me on another series, another range. But so after this, I might be able to go down a level, a level and then eventually, hopefully, I can just have kind of your general colour care shampoo. And um, so this is the one for hair that's literally probably beyond saving. Um, so yeah, it's the resistance range three and four. I've got the shampoo, which I think it's like a balm. I don't, oh no, it's not. It's called Bain Therapisty. Therapist. And um, basically, this is the shampoo and I've got the mask instead of the conditioner. But I use this as a conditioner, so every time I wash my hair, which isn't a lot, but I am doing it more often now, so about twice a week, I'll shampoo, use this as a conditioner, um, and I've had it for probably, you've got to give everything at least six weeks before you notice a difference. I've only had this, I'd say, three to four weeks. Oh my God, the difference is insane. Insane. I'm so pleased with it, and there's so much more left. Like, this is expensive, but honestly, like, so I've used this a couple of times a week for three, four weeks. Look, I've barely used anything. Um, so once I use this, I am then going to go see my friend again and I might be able to go on to a different range. So this is what I love because it's prescriptive. Um, so, you know, like, for example, if you've got really fine hair, this, will, this won't be any good for you. Um, so it's great that there's different ranges. So, yeah, Kerastars, honestly, bloody amazing. Home remedies. Any advice and things you can do yourself at home and any tips for shiny hair? Okay, home remedies. Because I do use a shampoo, a really good shampoo and conditioner, um, I make my own treatment. I'm not gonna spend fortunes on the treatment um, because I just don't need it if you're using correct shampoos and stuff. Um, but what I like to do is I get these bottles off Amazon or eBay or somewhere. Um, and one of the best things for your hair is oil. Like, it's just brilliant. It can be castor oil, coconut oil, um, Moroccan oil, but I get, I think it's called cemented. Is, is it called, it's not called cemented, is it? It's coconut oil from Amazon, but it's the runny kind, so it's not in the pot. It's not concentrated, it's not called cemented. Uh, I'll put it below. <laughs> so I use castor oil, coconut oil, um, and I do put a few drops of lavender in. Um, lavender is good for your hair and also it just makes it smell a bit nice. So I put a few drops of lavender in just so it feels a bit more sparry. 
mm, and a bit bougie, I put it in a spray bottle and maybe once a fortnight, um, when my hair needs washing, so on dirty hair, I'll separate my hair, spray it, give it a good rub into my scalp because you really need to stimulate your scalp and then I'll brush it through with a tangle teaser or a wet brush or something, tie it up. I do normally sleep in it because my hair's that dry, it soaks it up. But obviously if you're worried about getting oil on your sheets and stuff, maybe do it in the morning or even an hour before you need to wash your hair and then you will need to wash it out because it's oil. Um, so yeah, that's a great home little remedy. Oh, and the best things for shiny hair, the best range I've come across, obviously shiny hair is all down to the condition of your hair. So, you know, invest in nice products. Um, if you're blonde, unfortunately, your hair's never gonna be shiny. Blonde hair absorbs light, whereas dark hair reflects it, which is why dark hair always looks shinier. Um, but there's things you can do to help. So a range I love to use is the Color Wow range. I, you can get it online. Um, loads of their products are beautiful. They do like a pre-shampoo treatment. That's I think it's called Dream Filter. Um, and that's meant to get all cack off your hair. So it's kind of, your hair looks all fresh again. They do a finishing serum and it's called Colour Pop, Pop Gloss, Pop Gloss, something like that. And it's a serum, but your hair literally looks so shiny. So yeah, definitely recommend the Wow products for glossy hair. However, the reason why I prefer Kerastase is because it is prescriptive. I know I keep saying prescriptive, but get it in your heads. Um, so Olaplex, you know, you'll use it, you need to use it for at least six weeks. Use it for six weeks, your hair will feel better. But unfortunately, if you use that for a year, it's not gonna get any better and it's probably gonna to become too heavy for your hair and not everyone's hair's the same. Iodoplex is great if you've got a problem and you need to build up the strength of your hair. However, it's not something you'd use forever. Do you know what I mean? So use it for six weeks, give your hair that boost, build it up, get it strong, especially if you're changing colors, etc. cetera. Um, but then I would look into shampoos that are for your hair type. Um, it will make a massive difference if you're using stuff that's for your hair type, just with styling and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Olaplex is worth it, it's great, it's not a forever product. Um, I hope that helps, and if you are going to use any of them, I would recommend the shampoo and conditioner. Like I said, there's kind of, they're your main products you need. If you're not using a good shampoo and conditioner, you're wasting your time using heat spray treatments and all of that. Shampoo and conditioner is the main thing really. So start off with the shampoo and conditioner and you can always add to your range if you really get on with it. Any dupes on Dyson Air Wraps? I swear by Parallax hair dryers. They're bloody amazing and they will last you years and years and years. And they're what most salons use because they're just so sturdy and strong and you can get in there. However, I understand that not everyone finds it comfortable blow drying their own hair and stuff like that. So the Dysons are brilliant because they're lighter and things like that. Um, the air wraps are great because you know you do get that salon blow dry yourself. Um, so if you struggle to do your hair, defo, Dyson air wraps amazing. If you can do your hair, don't waste your money because you can do your hair. <laughs> um, with regards to dupes, I've used one dupe and it was shite. Um, and it was just when I got a famas and it was still about 80 odd quid um, but yeah it wasn't good so unfortunately I do think with the Dyson it's one of those things where either get the Dyson or don't <laughs> like you know just some things you can't go cheap and I do think if you're somebody that's going to use the Dyson every day and you're going to blow dry your hair every day do it if you're not um, and you can style your hair lovely without it don't bother um, so sorry no I don't really know any decent dupes Okay, so I've got another question about oil. So is Moroccan oil bad for your hair? So, oils are absolutely great for your hair, scalp, skin, <coughs> everything. Um, no, oils are great for everything, but using them in the correct way. So I use mine as a treatment before I shampoo it out my hair. You can use them as serums, um, but just be careful, if you're using a tiny, tiny bit of oil as a serum or a finishing gloss or however you want to use it, do not use heat afterwards. Um, make sure you've done all your heat and styling and then use your oils and serums. Um, my first question on hair extensions is, I had nano extension bonds, but I feel like I lost so much hair having them. How can I prevent this? If you're losing so much hair having them, get them out, that system is not working for you. Extensions do not, cause any damage, cause any fallout whatsoever, unless they're applied wrong, maintained incorrectly, or you have the wrong method. And getting the right method is very difficult. So basically, nano 
So nano buttons um, are nano rings, micro rings, but tiny ones. So they're great for fine hair because they're so discreet. Um, not so great on thick hair because if I'm honest, like I couldn't have nanos because I just wouldn't be able to get into each individual one to keep them detangled and stuff because I've got so much hair, if that makes sense. So I have the micro rings, which are the slightly bigger ones. Um, so yeah, nano rings are great for finer hair. So if you have got fine hair, then you are having the right method. But let me just stress that if you wear your extensions for a minimum of 12 weeks, in 12 weeks, you should have shared thousands and thousands and thousands of hair strands. If your hair is inside a bond, a nano bond, a pre-bond, whatever bond, or ring, whatever, your hair's still gonna detach from the scalp because it's your natural hair growth cycle. But if it's in one of your bonds, it's not gonna brush out. So one thing I will say is women do worry that when they have the extensions removed, when we brush it and stuff, you feel like you're shedding a lot of hair. That's not any extra hair whatsoever. That is hair that should have been shed over the past 12 weeks, three months, four months, however long it's been. So don't panic. If you do feel like your extensions are coming out with a lot of hair attached to them, it's generally normally just your natural shed, hair shedding. Um, but what can happen is, because this girl also said about um, she was getting little knots and stuff. So this is the bond. I mean, this is a massive bond, but just go with me. So this is your hair and the bonds around your hair. This hair is detached from the scalp, yeah? But it can't come out. However, the extension next to it also has this and the extension next to it also has this. These hairs are going to kind of tangle together and start to kind of knot together. This, is, this means you're going too long between appointments. I mean, everyone's hair grows at different rates. So somebody might be able to go 12 weeks, some clients might only be able to go six weeks. So it completely depends. But as your hair grows down, these strands are gonna be more longer and loose and more likely to knot. So this is really important because it's matting and knotting that causes the damage to your hair, not the extensions. So if you'll find you are getting little knots, you're going too long between your appointments. Um, so I recommend getting them, and with nano rings, the best thing about them is you just refit the hair. So just book back in, get them all refit again, nice and neat. Um, and this is another thing, you might also be having too many extensions in your head for you to kind of cope with and maintain. Nine times out of 10 though, if you are starting to get knots, it's normally when they've grown out, just get yourself booked in for a refit. Um, which I do recommend anything between eight to 12 weeks. 12 weeks is maximum. Um, for the nanos and micro rings. Um, my extensions are literally hanging off my head, but because salons are closed, what do I do? So this leads on to that. I personally, some, some hairdressers will disagree with this and say you should never take your own extensions out at home. However, I think you will cause more damage to your hair by keeping them in because you're more likely to get knots and mats and stuff, which once you have knots and mats, there's no going back from that. Um, so if you go too long and you're getting knots and mats and stuff, that's more dangerous than me getting you the correct stuff to remove them yourself with help and my advice. So if you are overdue, um, I do highly recommend you remove your extensions. Um, if you're one of my clients and you're watching this, thank you. Um, or if you're not a client, you can go onto my work Instagram, message me, and I have a YouTube video and a link of loads of information of how to remove your extension safely, do's and don'ts, what you should be using, what you shouldn't. And if you aren't living alone and you've got someone with you, definitely get them to help you. But honestly, I do really, really recommend removing them if you're going over. Next question is, best extensions for fine hair? Okay, so personally, again, it's hard to say because everyone's different. Um, book yourself a consultation with your hair extension specialist. Um, they'll do tests on your hair and scalp just to see you know, your hair's okay to go ahead with extensions and they'll also ask you questions about your lifestyle and which method will suit you better um, but off my head just generally the best for fine hair is nano bonds I don't actually think tapes are great for fine hair they're meant for fine hair and I completely disagree with them tapes are a more permanent semi-permanent clipping they're a big weft they're chunky pieces and you're sticking them on fine hair when, when your hair's wet and heavy, it's not great for fine hair. So if anyone tells you that tapes are great on fine hair, I completely disagree. Um, but everyone has their own opinion, but generally all my extension clients that have tapes generally have thicker hair and they just want a few for thickness or they use them to add a bit of color. 
so yeah best for fine hair is defo nano bonds um which are the nano micro rings the tiny ones or pre-bonded which are the keratin glue which everyone's shit scared of and i don't know why um i do customize my bonds so you know if you have got fine delicate hair we can customize where we place them and i can cut the bonds so they're a lot smaller i do make my own bonds sometimes as well so there's ways around because i do in fringes i do um really tiny micro bonds which are just pre-bonded but i really cut them and make them tiny and stuff so they're really small and delicate they're perfect for fine hair and generally most people with super fine hair shouldn't really be having a full head down to their bum hole anyway so again that's down to your hairdresser but i just think nano bonds or pre-bonded but customized so they're smaller um, so I'll say this, I'll answer the same question, but for thick hair. For thick hair, micro rings are great, which are the same as the nano rings, nano bonds, whatever you want to call them. Um, but they're just slightly bigger. So tapes are great for thick hair, but again, I wouldn't do a full head of tapes. Tapes are great for adding a bit of volume and for adding a bit of colour. If you want full head of extension, then you've got thick hair, pre-bonded or micro rings. Um, I have trained in wefts. Uh, I don't like them. Wefts are great. Um but not so great on Caucasian hair. Okay, last question. This is a really good one. Um, I'm thinking of doing an extension course as I'm really obsessed with mine. Best advice how to get into this. However, I am scared. Hairdressers are known for being bitchy and very competitive. Is this industry like this? Okay, um, go for it. Um, extensions are never gonna go out. They're never, and you don't have to be a hairdresser to do them. Um, so, you know, I think it's a great thing to get into. However, however, I've been doing this for over 12 years and I've got to where I am because of what I've done in the 12 years. So I just want to make it very clear to people. Um, if you've got a passion for it, absolutely do it. But let me tell you, if you see me behind closed doors, I'm a stress head nine times out of 10. Running your own business. Um, and yes, this industry is full on it's stressful and hard work so if if you've got a passion for it you'll be fine if you're doing it just because you think it's good money or you know you just think oh yeah i could do that honey don't just don't so let's start from the beginning so i um i've done quite a few courses with different companies um over the years uh, but about six years ago i come across beauty works did a beauty works top up course um and their course is a bit shy, to be honest. <laughs> any, hair, any hair extension course will be fine, as long as it's accredited so you can get your full insurance. Um, but definitely go to the course of hair, whose hair you want to use, do your research. So if you want to use Beauty Works hair, which is really popular, then do a Beauty Works course. However, don't just put yourself on one Beauty Works course because it's like two days, I think, um, and then that's it, you're a, you're somebody that can go glue things in somebody's head and cut them, which petrifies me. Make sure you're doing top-up courses, online courses, practice, practice, practice. Do your course to get you insurance and to get in with that brand, but that's not all you have to do. You have to do other courses. You have to, you know, like they, they train you the basics of how to just go along a, hair, a haircut like that. To me, that's not a haircut. Like I cut layers into clients' hair. I also think you need to learn about the scalp and stuff because, you know, like I've got clients with scalp conditions, you need to know what to do there. So 100% look into it and do it, but don't just think it's one course and that's it, you'll be set up full, to, full time doing hairdressing, um, hair extension, sorry. Um, that's why I said you need a passion for it because honestly, it's you won't earn that great from it for a very long time. Your overheads, like people probably, like my clients know what I charge and they probably are like, Jesus Christ, she's rolling in it. You have no idea about the overheads, how much the actual hair costs and stuff. So it's harder than people think. And I know a lot of girls that do extensions will agree with me. So yeah, no, I don't think it's bitchy and I don't think it's competitive. I think you can let it get bitchy and competitive. Um, like I see a lot of girls moan about other people's businesses and stuff, but there is enough clients for everybody, right? So let them do their clients, I'll do mine. Brilliant. And you know what? You're better off joining them and supporting each other. You'll get further. So, so that is all the questions. I can't think of any more myself, to be honest. If you do have any questions, comment them because I will. I do always go back and look at my two comments I get. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys.